All right. Going to be working now on the homework for 8.2. All right. Uh, we're going to start out with number seven. Number seven. The instructions here determine whether the geometric series, so they're telling us that this is geometric. That's nice. On a test, I, I normally won't tell you that. 10 minus 2 plus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.08 plus dot, dot, dot. Determine whether or not that's convergent or divergent. If it's convergent, find its sum. So remember for geometric series, um, we have actually two formulas, sum n equals one to infinity of a r to the n minus one will be equal to um, a over one minus r if the absolute value of r is less than one. We also have, you can change the index from one to zero a r to the n, and this will be equal to the same thing. So all that did was shifted the index. That changed from n minus 1 to n. That changed from 1 to 0. Um, so that this, this is our geometric series. If this absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, the series diverges. All right, so what we need to do is figure out if we can get this to be written in this form. I'm going to work with that top one. All right, so let me, let me try and figure out what the terms of this series are. And so 10 is 10, sure, 10, minus 2, plus, let's see, that's 4 tenths, minus, see, this is 8 hundredths. And then I'm guessing my next one Let's see, what would it be? We have to figure that out, right? So maybe let's write this one as 2 over 1. And then let's rewrite this first one as 10 over 1. All right, this is going to be tricky. I've got to make some guesses here. Looks like the only pattern I see right now is we have an alternating series, right? So I'm going to try and write this out. My series looks like it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity. Since it alternates and starts with a positive, my series must include negative 1 to the n plus 1. Because when I plug in 1, I need a 2 here. So that squares and gets a positive. Everything after that will switch back and forth. So that will create my alternating part. Fraction-wise, I think I see a pattern here. This looks like. You know, two, four, you know, two, four, eight, sorry, I almost said six. Two, four, eight, those look like powers of two. So it looks like I've got two to the first power, two to the second power, two to the third power. Of course, I've got minus here, plus here. On the bottom, this looks like 10 to the first power, 10 squared. 10 to the first power, 10 squared. And I'm hoping this is going to work. If I do that, then this 1 down here has to be 10 to the 0, right, if we're going backwards. Yes, and that works. But then this first one, following this pattern, I would have to have a 2 to the 0 here, and on the bottom a 10 to the negative 1. So the question is, is this this? And in fact, it is. 2 to the 0 is 1. Uh, 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth. And when you flip that up, you get 10. So this, in fact, is my series. Now, of course, it continues forever. So looks like I've got powers of 2 starting at 0. To make that happen, 2 to the n minus 1. On the bottom, I have powers of 10 starting at negative 1. To make that happen, I've got to go 10 to the n minus 2. So let's just check it. If I plug in 1, I already know I'm going to get uh, 2 here, and that's going to square. It's going to give me a positive. That 1 goes in here. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 to the 0 is that first one. 
and then if I plug in uh, one here, one minus two is negative one, I get 10 to the negative one and that's the first one. And then after that, the powers just keep going up by one. Powers keep going up by one, so I'm good to go. So this looks like it. But recall that what I need to do is I need to make it look like this. So I need to figure out, is there a constant out front and is there a, a number that's being raised to a power? So let's, let's work on this. Um, could you rewrite this like this? We already have an n minus 1 on the 2, which is good. But I have an n minus 2 here. I don't like that. I would rather it be an n minus 1. So I'm going to make it happen. I've got negative 1 <clears throat> to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 over 10 to the n, oops, to the n minus 1 plus 1 minus 2. So we'll just Again, what we're doing is we're, we did this a while back, we're realizing a hidden zero in here, but we're rewriting that zero as minus one plus one. And that way, we get the n minus one that we need right there. So <clears throat> now, I can rewrite this as sum n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one, times 2 to the n minus 1 over, now I'm going to split it right here. I've got 10 to the n minus 1 times, and then now use this, this is 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 10 to the negative 1. Let's just check it. If we were to put these two back together, you would add these two together. n minus 1 plus negative 1 is the same as minus 1, so this would be n minus 1 minus 1, that's n minus 2, which is the original problem. But notice now, I've got both of these to the n minus 1. So all I need to take care of, because this is just a number, right? There's no n on it, is to figure out how I can rewrite this as n minus 1. And I can do the exact same thing that I just did. So I'll do this. I'll rewrite this as sum n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus one plus one, that's my hidden zero, but I already had a plus one. And then I had my two to the n minus one over 10 to the n minus one times 10 to the negative one. And this becomes sum n equals one to infinity. All right, rewriting that, that's negative one to the n minus one times so I'm splitting it here. Negative one to the one plus one is two, negative one squared times two to the n minus one over 10 to the n minus one times 10 to the negative one. All right, <laughs> remember I'm trying to get to this. Negative one squared is one, so I don't even need that there. And so, now what I'll do is I'm going to take everything that has an n minus 1 in it as a power and put those together. So I'm taking negative 1 to the n minus 1 times the 2 to the n minus 1 over 10 to the n minus 1. Since these are all to the n minus 1, I can write this as sum n equals 1 to infinity. All of this to the n minus 1. So negative 1 times 2 over 10 negative 1 times 2 over 10, all of that to the n minus 1, which is going to be negative 2 over 10, which is negative 1 fifth. Negative 1 fifth to the n minus 1. And then, so I've taken care of this, this, and this. I still had a 10 to the negative 1, which I can move up as a 10. So I have a 10 sitting here on top, which I'll write like that. And that's it, we've got the form we need. We have that A in the problem is 10. We've got that R is negative 1 fifth. And we've got the N minus 1 to match up, right? Sum is going from 1 to infinity, 1 to infinity. And so we can determine what this does. 
So let's now check to see what we need for convergence. To converge, we need to take the absolute value of r, and we need that to be less than 1. That's the question. Well, the absolute value of r is the absolute value of negative 1 fifth. Is that less than 1? Well, absolutely. That's 1 fifth is less than 1. Check. So it converges, all right? So this series converges. And what does it converge to? converges to a over 1 minus r, which is going to be for us 10, that's a, over 1 minus r, which is negative 1 fifth. So this is going to be 10 over 1 plus a fifth. Putting the denominator uh, together into one fraction, it's going to be 6 fifths. So 10 over 6 fifths, which is the same as 10 times 5 sixths, which is 50 over 6. 2 goes into each of those, 25 thirds. So that, that series is converging. If you were to add those up using that same pattern forever, it would get closer and closer and closer and closer to 25 thirds. All right, give me just a second here. Let's look at, I'll let you try 8 on your own, because 8 is very similar to that. <clears throat> let me look at 9. So in that problem, there was a lot going on in that problem. We had to find the pattern. We had to, once we established the pattern, rewrite it. Number nine is a little more straightforward because they actually give you the summation. They give you n equals one to infinity, and they give you negative three to the n plus, or sorry, n minus one over four to the n. So they've already done a lot of the groundwork for you. They've already determined the formula. And so it's now up to you to, to see if this is geometric, which you know because they told you it's geometric. You just have to figure out if it converges. So you, what you need to do is make sure that anything that's raised to the n power, that that's an n minus 1, which right now this one on the bottom is not. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to use that hidden 0 again. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3 to the n minus 1 over 4 to the n, and here we come, minus 1 plus 1. And see, there wasn't anything out here, so I don't need to put anything else. And I'm going to split it right here. So this is sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 3 to the n minus 1 over 4 to the n minus 1 times 4 to the 1. So if you put these two together, you get back this, which is the same as this. So I don't need the 1 here. I'll get rid of it. And now I can rewrite this sum n equals 1 to infinity. Now the things that are raised to the n minus 1 are these two. So I'm going to put them together negative 3 over 4 to the n minus 1. And then I have a 4 over here on the bottom, so I'm going to put a 1 fourth out front. I'm going to make sure it's coming out on camera. Yes. So we can identify now that we have an a. It's a constant. And we have our r is the thing that's being raised to the n minus 1. I need to check to see that the absolute value of r is less than 1 which it is. So the absolute value of r less than 1, that's the question. Absolute value of r is absolute value of negative 3 fourths. It's less than 1, check. And therefore, this converges. So therefore, we get convergence. And what does it converge to? a over 1 minus r, which is going to be a, 1 fourth, over 1 minus, uh, 1 minus r, which is negative 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth over 1 plus 3 fourths, which
which is one fourth over, let's see, four fourths, seven fourths. And if you flip, this is one fourth times four sevenths, and you get one seventh. Okay, good. Let's see, number, that was number nine. Number 10, work yourself, but I'll give you a hint. Number 10, it diverges because the absolute value of R, R in that problem turns out to be um, negative 10 ninths, and the absolute value of that is greater than one. Number 11, let me work that one for you. Pi to the n over 3 to the n plus 1, n starts at 0. Okay, so sum n equals 0 to infinity, pi to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. Okay, so notice that this starts at 0. If that starts at 0, then our formula that we need to make it look like is this. So we need to the n power instead of the n minus 1 power. All right, so I'm going to stick with this and I'm actually going to try and make both of these to the n. So if I need to make this to the n, I need to subtract 1 from that. So I'm going to subtract 1 and add 1, right? So check this out. Or you know what? That's too much work. Let's do it this way. It's a lot easier to do it this way pi to the n, and then just rewrite that as 3 to the n times 3 to the 1. So if you put those two together, you get this. But peeling them apart, you can see you've got this here. They're both to the n power. So what I'll do now is I'll rewrite this, sum n equals 0 to infinity. Now I have pi over 3 to the n, that's those two. And then here I had a 1 over 3, so my a is one-third. So a is one-third, r is pi over three. So now we need to check for the convergence. What I want is the absolute value of r to be less than one. Well, the absolute value of r is the absolute value of pi over three. Is that less than one? Question? No, it is not. Pi is 3.14, and some change after that over three. That's a number that's bigger than one. This doesn't work. Therefore, this geometric series diverges. Number 10 works the same way. That's what I was getting at. Number 12, I'll just give you a hint, it does converge, but your R is weird in that problem. Just kind of strange, it has a radical in it. Uh, number 13. All right, so number 13, they're not telling you it's a geometric series. This is where we start for the first time. We have a series, and we're not being told what it is. We just have to figure out if it um, converges or diverges. So we can use anything we've learned in this section to determine this. So 3 to the n over e to the n minus 1. So when I'm looking at this series, I'm noticing that that my summation, my index n here, starts at 1. So if it is geometric series, I would be using a certain formula, right? If it's geometric, I would be using that one. Um, I also noticed that my numerator and denominator, they both have bases that are numbers, right? 3 is a number, e is a number. And more than that, um, they're both raised to an exponent with n in it. And that's exactly what a geometric series looks like. So if I can make these both be n minus 1s, I should be able to use that formula. So I'm going to rewrite this, sum n equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to go 3 to the n minus 1 times 3 to the 1. So I've done that a few times now. I'm hoping you're OK with that, right? My hidden 1, or my, sorry, my hidden 0, minus 1 plus 1. And then I've got these two are both to the n minus 1. So I get n equals 1 to infinity. Um, this is my number that's by itself, 3, and then times 
3 over e to the n minus 1. So there's my a, there's my r. But the absolute value of r needs to be less than 1. And the absolute value of r is 3 over e. Is that less than 1? No. e is 2.718 something. So when you try that, um, it's going to diverge. So this diverges. But it was a geometric series, all right? It was geometric. Let me see about 14. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to need to do the evens here. 14. Sum k equals 1 to infinity. Of k times k plus 2. k plus 3 squared. All right, so we have an important uh, um, test that we use whenever we're looking at series. I mean, right now I look at this and I'm not thinking geometric at all. And the reason is because I don't have numbers raised to the n, or in this case we're using the index k. So I would need something like some k equals 1 to infinity a um, r to the k minus 1. I would need some base raised to these powers. I, none of these k's are powers, so geometric is off the table. All right? Not even thinking about it. <clears throat> but we do have a test. It's called the nth term test. It's the first test we usually want to run. Nth term test. And what it says is that if you look at the sequence of numbers that's generated in this series, right, k being 1, then k being 2, then k being 3, that's just going to create a list of numbers that we're adding up. If we take the limit as, in this case, we usually use n here, but uh, since this problem is using k, what we're going to do is let k go to infinity of the sequence if this limit, if this limit, so if the a sub n, which is the part inside, right, that's the a sub n, the thing we're adding up, if that a sub n goes to some place, right, other than zero, so if it does not go to zero, then the series diverges. So that's such a powerful little test. It's saying that, look, I can guarantee you that if these numbers in here, as you plug in um, one and two, if those numbers that you're listing out, if they don't go to zero, there's no way this thing can converge. All right? If they go to zero, you actually don't know. It could converge. It could diverge. And, and I showed you examples of that in class. So. I like this test right now because it's always the first thing you want to kind of try. And I also see that uh, if I just expand out the numerator and denominator, I'm going to get k squared plus 2k over k squared plus 6k plus 9. And this looks like infinity over infinity, and I can use L'Hopital. And if I do that, and you know, we've done this in the previous um, section, if I do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to determine that this is going to go to 1. And since that goes to 1, that is not 0, right? It's going to somewhere other than 0. I can conclude that this diverges. All right? Just remember, though, if this went to 0, your conclusion would not be that it converges. It would just be that you don't know. But if it goes somewhere other than zero, you can guarantee, say, diverges. So that's it. How about number 15? All right, I think 15 is going to be pretty much the same thing. Sum n equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 over 3n minus 1. So this is the exact same thing. We look at this, it's not geometric, 
So I try the nth term test. Here I'll use n instead of k. Um, I'll take this and then I'll do L'Hopital's rule on it right here. And when you do that, you should get one third. And that's not zero. So it diverges. All right, how about number 16? Sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus 3 to the n over 2 to the n. Well, should we try the n term test again? Maybe we'll get lucky. What does, let's see, what does 1 plus 3 to the n over 2 to the n go to as n goes to infinity? That would be infinity over infinity. So you would use uh, L'Hopital, right? You could use L'Hopital. Um, yeah, you know what? Let me, let me do this because I want you to see what happens. If I do limit n goes to infinity here, after I do L'Hopital, and I'm keeping everything in n, I'm not going to switch to x and back because I'm hoping you've done enough of these to realize that you're just going to, that's more of just to understand that, look, you know, technically you can't take the derivative of a sequence, but since we've done it enough, we'll just say, once you do L'Hopital's rule and, and switch back, the derivative of top would be something like 3n natural log 3, uh, 3 to the n natural log 3, the bottom would be 2 to the n natural log 2. And now, this right here can be rewritten. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over 2 to the n times natural log 3 over natural log 2. And as n goes to infinity now, this number is bigger than 1. This thing is going to blow up. It's going to get huge. This is just a constant. So this is not going to 0. And so it diverges. Now another thing you could do, so this diverges, we're done, but another thing you could do is you could have split this into two fractions. And then what you could have done is you could realize that these are both geometric series. So this sum, n equals 1 to infinity. This one right here is the same as 1 over 2 to the n, and then plus this one over here is 3 over 2 to the n. And so, of course, you have to get these to look like n minus 1s. You, you don't need it to draw your conclusion right now because you already kind of know what's going to happen, but I'll, I'll show it to you anyway. This would be 1 half to the n minus 1 times 1 half to the 1. That's realizing the hidden 0 and then plus 3 halves to the n minus 1 times 3 halves to the 1. And so you know that if you split this up into two sums, this is a geometric series. This is A. This is R. The absolute value of R is less than 1. And so this piece would converge. But this one, here's your A. Here's your R. This R, the absolute value of that R, is not less than 1 because it's 1 half. So this would diverge, this would blow up. And if this one blows up, the whole thing's gonna blow up. So you're basically gonna come up with the same conclusion that it diverges. Just that one, that's one way using the um, end term test and the other way is just to look at it as a geometric series. Or actually the sum of two geometric series. Hope that made sense. So these first couple of problems is showing the power of the end, end term test. Let's see. All right, 18. Oh, wait. Okay, um, 17. I'll give you a hint on 17. I'm not going to work it. I'm just going to let it get set up for you. Sum, it's very similar to the last one. 1 plus. 2 to the n over 3 to the n. So what they did is they switched. Instead of 3 to the n over 2 to the n, they went 2 to the n over 3 to the n. So if you try the n term test, you're actually going to get 0. I'm going to show you because I want you to see that it fails. So I do 1 plus 2 to the n over 3 to the n. 
I do my L'Hopital rule on this. And the top, the derivative is 2 to the n, natural log 2, over the bottom is 3 to the n, natural log 3. And then this right here is 2 thirds to the n. And as n goes to infinity, since this number is between 0 and 1, this thing goes down to 0. Who cares what that is? That's a constant. So this thing does go to 0. So the n term test tells you that if this thing does not go to 0, it diverges. Since it goes to 0, the test is inconclusive. I don't know how much I can stress that to you. It tells you that you're going to have to find some other way of figuring out if it converges or di diverges. So we go back now. And like I said, I'm not going to work through this whole thing. But if you split this up into two again, then you can rewrite this one as one third to the n plus, and then this one two thirds to the n. And then since it starts at one, make this an n minus one by seeing the hidden zero, the hidden zero. Working them both out separately, you're going, to get, you're going to get an A and an R for this one, an A and an R for this one. Both the absolute value of the R's are going to be less than 1, which means they're both going to converge. You're going to use the formula A over 1 minus R to get that answer, the formula A over 1 minus R to get that answer. Add the two answers together. That's your sum. So this one will converge, but I'm not going to show the work. All right, now 18. Sum n equals 1 to infinity, cosine 1 over n. Let me try the nth term real quick. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine of 1 over n. OK, 1 over n as n goes to infinity goes to 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And that is not 0. Therefore, this diverges. So that's a simple one, again, with the nth term. It's very useful, that test, huh? All right, how about 19? Sum n equals 1 to infinity of the nth root of 2? What? Nth root of 2. All right, we haven't seen this before. Let's just make sure we understand what the nth root of 2 means. This means 2 raised to the 1 over n. That's what the nth root means. Just like if you were to have the square root of 2, that'd be 2 to the 1 half. Or if you had the cube root of 2, that'd be 2 to the 1 third. Same thing. The nth root would be 2 to the 1 over n. Huh. All right. Well, let me try the nth term. Nth term test. So what's the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the 1 over n. And I'm hoping that this is going to go to something other than 0. And it's nice because n goes to infinity, 1 over infinity. That's 0. 2 to the 0 goes to 1, and that's not 0. And therefore, this diverges. And these are all working out very nice. When are they going to get hard? Number 20. Diverges. Sum n equals 1 to infinity. And then we have 0 0.8 to the n minus 1. And then minus 0 0.3 to the n. There we go. Look at where the n is. The n's up in the exponent. The bases are just numbers. That's looking like geometric series. In fact, this one looks exactly like a geometric series. This one is sum n equals 1 to infinity of 0 0.8 to the n minus 1. Here, the a in front is a 1. And then the r here is the 0.8, which is definitely less than 1. So that's going to converge. Minus, now I have another sum. So I'm splitting this up into two sums, n equals 1 to infinity. This one is to the n, uh, the n, so I need it to be n minus 1. So how about 0 0.03, the n minus 1 times 0 .0, uh, 0 0.3, like that. So again, peeling off 1 using the uh, hidden 0. So this time, this is my a, and this is my r. 
and this R, the absolute value of it is less than one. So we're gonna get two convergent geometric se uh, series here. And so the sum of this one, remember the A is a one right here, is one over one minus 0 0.8, and then minus, right, this one is A, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, over one minus um, 0 0.3. So let's try and figure out what this is. This is um, equal to 1 over 0.2 minus 0.3 over 0.7. And I know you want to get your calculator out right now, but 1 over, uh, this is 2 tenths minus 3 tenths over 7 tenths. I'll flip this one up like this. This will become 3 sevenths. Over here, I'll flip that up. That's 5. And so we get common denominator here, 7, 7. We get 35 minus here's 32 sevenths. What was that? I have a reminder here for something. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Why? What? That, that's not right. I'm doing here. What number was that? Number 20. Okay. All right, number 21, I'll let you do on your own. 21 is very much like um, 18. It's going to diverge, but you need to convince yourself. Something about arc tangent. When you do the n term test on that, what happens is n goes to infinity. It's like arc tangent of infinity. What is that? I hope you know by now. All right, 22 is interesting because it looks, looks like what the heck? Sum k equals 1 to infinity. Cosine of 1, all of that to the k. What? What the world? Well, this is actually a geometric series. Um, we have the, the index, k, is up here in the exponent. And so, I mean, that's basically like, almost like the r to the n. So we'd like that to be n minus 1. But let's figure out on a calculator what cosine of 1 is. Because what does that need to be? It needs to be less than 0, right? So we make sure that we are in. Um, we make sure that we are in radian mode on our calculator. And we do cosine of 1. So let me just figure that out. Cosine of 1 is approximately equal to, let's see, I'm in radians, 0.54. Good enough. But that definitely means that that would be less than 1. So I know it'll converge. So I need to make this a minus one. So this is where I do minus one plus one. So minus one plus one, I think, hopefully I've done this enough that that's what happens, All right? If I rewrite it. So my A here is this, and my R here is this. And I already know that the absolute value of R is less than one. So this will converge, and what it converges to is A cosine one over 1 minus r, 1 minus cosine 1. And let me see if they want you to write that down a certain way. Yeah, no, that's it. You could get a decimal approximation to that if you want, but that's the exact answer right there. This converges to this. Kind of weird, huh? 23. Here we go. One third plus one sixth plus one ninth plus one twelfth plus one fifteenth plus dot dot dot. See if we can come up with a formula for this. Sum n equals one to infinity. So these are all just multiples of three. It's three times one, three times two, three times three, three times four, three times five. So it looks like one over three n will work. 
And this is not, this is not um, geometric because this n is not in the power. Um, <clears throat> and so what I might need to do here is take a look at the nth term test. It's been saving us so far. And so what I do is just take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence, which is 1 over 3n, but that goes to 0. And that's bad. That means that this test fails. All right? It's inconclusive. I don't know what the answer is. What I do know is that if that went to something other than 0, it would diverge. But since it, it goes to 0, I don't know anything. So this is where you have to go back and look at the lecture and realize that what you have here is a constant on top. Okay, so you've got your sum. You've got some constant on top, which in this case is the 1, over some linear expression. Okay, the linear expression in the variable n, which is our index. Anytime we see this, this is the same as a harmonic series. So what we could do is essentially take that 3 out, make it a 1 third, and that's your harmonic series right there. And so we know that all harmonic series diverge. So your answer is diverges. There's no work that needs to be done other than to identify it as a harmonic series. All right, 24. This is going to be the last one on this video, and then I'm going to take a quick break. One third, two ninths. One third plus two ninths plus one twenty seventh plus two over eighty one plus one over two forty three plus two over seven twenty nine. All right, so we look at this and we try and figure out if we can get a pattern to this. And it looks like the bottoms are all powers of three. It looks like three to the first power, three squared, three cubed, three to the fourth, three to the fifth, three to the sixth. But the, the issue that I have is how am I gonna make the top switch back and forth between one and two? That's gonna be really, really difficult for me to do. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna look at this as two series. Here's one of them. And here's the other. Okay? The one, the one that has the ones on it, let me write that one first. It's one third plus one twenty-seventh plus one over two forty-three plus dot 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 dot. And then I have the other series in there, which is two ninths plus two over eighty-one plus two over seven twenty-nine. Now what I'll do is I'll realize, you know, I'm gonna do like a I'm going to work at this, and I'm going to get, figure out what's the sum for this one and what's the sum for that one. So the sum for this one, realizing we've got 1 over 3 to the first, plus 1 over 3 cubed, plus 1 over 3 to the fifth, right? Plus dot, dot, dot. And then this is 2 over 3 squared, plus 2 over 3 to the fourth, plus 2 over 3 to the 6. So these are all um, 1 over 3 to a power, but these powers are odd. This is 2 over 3 to a power, but these powers are even. So I can rewrite this as sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over, because it's always 1 on top, and then 3 to the, how do we say, odds starting with 1, 2n minus 1 plus this one, which is going to be 2 over, uh, sorry, n equals 1 to infinity of 3 to the, how do we do even starting at 2? Two? 2n, two like that. All right. That should create these two, and then those two added together creates the original sequence, or series. It's kind of clever, huh? Now let's look at these. 
These look like geometric series because we, what we have is our base to a power. We need these powers to be n minus ones because we're starting at n equals one. So watch what I do first. Tell me if you agree with this. That's the same because if I take one and raise it to this power, I just get one, any power, doesn't matter, and then this, three, I get that. Then I have plus over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Um, actually, I think what I'll do, yeah, I'll do it. Um, N equals one to infinity, I got that two right here, and then I'm gonna rewrite this as one third to the two n. Notice I cannot put two over three to the two n because this two never changes. If you put it in here, it's gonna start getting raised to powers. So that should be both of those. And now I need to force these to be n minus ones, not two n minus ones, n minus ones. So how in the world are we going to do that? How are we gonna do that? How do you force that to be a two, or sorry, the two n minus one, how do I force it to be in just and n minus one. Well, see if you agree with this. n minus one to the infinity, or sum n equals one to the infinity. How about this? One third to the two to the n minus a half. Ooh, what the hell happened there? Well, remember, if you have, if you have something to a power, to a power, you multiply these two powers. And if I multiply two to this, I get two n and then minus one. So I could do that, that would be okay. Um, over here, I can do the same exact thing. You'll see where this is going. I did these in class too, so. Two times, here this one is a little easier. It's one third to the n, uh, sorry, to the two, to the n. So if I multiply this times this, I get this. So let's go a little bit further. This is sum n equals one to infinity. Now one third squared is one ninth. So this is really one ninth, right? To the n minus a half. And then plus sum n equals one to infinity. I've got two times one third squared is going to be one ninth to the n. Now what I need, got, see I've kind of gotten rid of that two that was causing a problem because I needed it to be an n minus one. Now I just have n's, I need to make this an n minus one, I need to make this an n minus one. So here's where I come in with my hidden zero. So I'm going to subtract and add one in there. So this becomes some, let me get rid of this. Become sum n equals one, one ninth. And then I'm subtracting and adding one. So n minus one plus one minus a half. And I'm gonna split it right there. Then on this one, I've got my two. This is a one ninth. And then on my power n minus one plus one, and I'm gonna split it right there. So what we get is this, equals sum n equals one to infinity, I have one ninth to the n minus one times one ninth to the one minus a half is a half, plus sum n equals one to infinity of two times one ninth to the n minus one times just one ninth here to the first power because of that. I am so close. On this one, I have my r raised to the n minus one. Here's my a, this whole thing. And what is that? What is one ninth to the one half? Well, that's just the square root of one ninth, which is one third. So that a is one third. Over here, I need to do a little bit. This is one ninth, but I had a two out there. So how about we take that two and we put it right here, two ninths, get rid of this. And this is my a and this is my r. On both of these, the r is less than one, the r is less than one, so these will both converge. So remembering, I'm gonna have to erase that. 
This will now be equal to a over 1 minus r, so it was 1 third was a over 1 minus r plus, over here a is 2 ninths over 1 minus r. So this equals 1 third over, let's see here, that's, uh, uh oh, can't do simple math right now, 8 ninths and then plus 2 ninths over 8 ninths. And we can flip here, when we flip that up, we get 2 over 8, that's 1 fourth. Plus over here, when we flip, let me just flip it, 9, 8, we get what, 3, that cancels, we get 3 eighths. And when we put those two together, we should get 5 eighths. 5 eighths. There we go. Okay, I think that that's sufficient for now. I'm, I am going to need to do a couple of more, um, but that should get you going, I think.